Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Trading Iron Ore Over the Horizon Views for Iron Ore and Steel Markets. Today's webinar is sponsored by the Dalian Commodity Exchange and is hosted by Nanua Financial UK Co Limited. My name is Darren Anthony, and I am the Senior Business Development Manager at Nanua UK in London, and I will be your host today. I am delighted to have join us as panelists today. David Hightower from the Hightower Research Report in Chicago and Helmut Mueller, Product Specialist, EMEA at CQG. As a founding principal of the Hightower Report, David Hightower analyzes the energy, metals, equity index, currency and bond markets daily. Dave has over 30 years experience in the commodity and financial futures industry. Before starting the Hightower Report, Dave was the director of research for the then largest commodity brokerage firm in the United States, Stotler and Company. Prior to this, Dave was one of the first paid full-time stock index futures analyst and has since covered the stock market on a daily basis. Dave has provided research interviews to CNN, Bloomberg Television, The Wall Street Journal, Futures Magazine, and many other industry groups and publications. Dave has worked with regulatory agencies, exchanges, and other industry players on a wide variety of research and trading projects. He also educates commercial traders in basic and advanced hedging techniques. Helmut Mueller specializes in advanced options modules, trade system programming, condition development, custom studies, auto trading, and all other aspects of visualizing trading ideas in CQG. Helmut joined CQG in 1997 as a customer service technician. With almost 10 years experience in the IT arena, he quickly advanced to become a CQG product specialist after just one year. Since 1998, his main focus has been on empowering CQG customers to make the most out of their CQG systems. Helmut also holds the role of training internal CQG employees throughout Europe. And since 2009, he has dedicated a part of his time to the sales team in order to grow the CQG community in Germany and Switzerland. Today's webinar is in three sections, an introduction to Nanhua and the available Chinese contracts. This is followed by an in-depth analysis of iron ore and steel statistics with David Hightower. Thirdly, technical analysis tools and iron ore arbitrage you can CQG with Helmut. Lastly, there will be a Q&A session, so please feel free to pose your questions via the chat box and I shall collate them and address them after the main presentations. So without further ado, we shall begin. <clears throat> First of all, the all important disclaimer. The content in this presentation is for informational purposes only and you should not construe any such information or other material as investment, financial, tax, legal, or other advice. Futures trading is not suitable for all investors. Futures are leveraged derivatives products and investors may lose more than the amount of money deposited for a futures position because only a percentage of a contract's value is required to trade. Therefore, investors should carefully consider that if it's suitable for them to invest in these futures related products in this presentation and that if they can afford the loss that might happen in the futures trading. Although every attempt has been made to ensure the accuracy of the information within this presentation, Nanua Futures Co Limited, all of its subsidiaries, shareholders, board members, and staff assume no liability or responsibility for any errors or omissions. So then, with that out of the way, who is Nanhua? Nanhua Futures provides a global derivative surgery service and is mainly engaged in commodity and financial futures and options brokerage business. Futures investment advisory service, asset management, securities investment fund sales, et cetera, et cetera. Nanhua Futures total capital is over 15 billion Chinese and one. Nanhua Futures currently has 35 branch offices in mainland China. The trading volumes, customer margin funds and assets under management all rank in the top of the industry. Nanhua were first established nearly a quarter of a century ago in 1996. In 2001, 
they established the first research futures institution in Shanghai. And in 2005, they launched the Nanhua CRB index. In 2006, HG and H International Futures was established in Hong Kong. Since then, international offices have been established in the USA, Singapore, and most recently, the UK. In August 2019, Nanhua Futures became the first futures brokerage firm to be listed on the Chinese A share market. Incidentally, Nanhua Financial UK Co Limited is regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority of the United Kingdom. Nanhua are members of, or trading clear are members of, SGX, LME, CME, DME, HKEX, ICE, the Dalian Commodity Exchange, CFEX, the Shanghai International Energy Exchange, Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange, and the Shanghai Futures Exchange. So in terms of access to the familiar global exchanges, Nanhua can provide access and clearing. In addition, we can provide access to the international products China has made available in recent years. Overseas participants are institutions that satisfy the prescribed conditions of the CSRC, which is the regulatory body in China, and each of the exchanges are approved by those exchanges to trade directly. This is where Nanhua can assist. The international futures products that are currently available from China are Shanghai crude, rubber, and fuel oil, all on the International Energy Exchange of Shanghai. Iron ore is on the Dalian Exchange, the DCE, and lastly, PTA is listed on the ZCE. The Shanghai International Energy Exchange listed for the crude oil contract in March 2018. The TSR20 rubber contract was uh, listed in August 2019, and more recently, the fuel oil contract in June this year. The Dalian Commodity Exchange launched international oil, uh, international iron ore, sorry, uh, in May 2018. The Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange launched the PTA international contract in November 2018. It is widely expected in the near future that the INE will list copper futures and the DCE will launch their parmalene futures. In the past month alone, the Chinese regulator, the CSRC, has announced plans to combine their two current foreign investor programs, QFII and RQFII. This is to pave the way for more foreign investment into all China markets. The changes are mainly reflected in three aspects. Firstly, lowering the entry threshold to facilitate investment operation. Secondly, orderly expansion of the scope of investment. And thirdly, strengthening continuous supervision. Looking forward to the future, they believe that the new rules may further increase the attractiveness of shares to foreign investors and make the products and strategies of foreign investors participating in the, sh in the shares more diversified, which will further improve the A share market. In addition, the CSRC said this month it has started preparing to launch a futures exchange in the southern city of Guangzhou as part of efforts to desert the Greater Bay Area around the Pearl River Delta. The CSRC said in a statement it has established a working group in Guangzhou to prepare for the launch. It's all part of efforts to develop, to develop the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, the CSRC said. Incidentally, Guangzhou is the capital of Guangdong province. Now, Nanhua UK can provide clearing and access via HGNH, our parent company, which has memberships of INE, the DCE, and the ZCE. Client funds will be held with Barclays Bank in the UK. Now, Nanhua has an extensive global network of connections to Chinese and global exchanges. In addition, co-location is available at each of the exchange venues which Nanhua can provide assistance with. Um, the co-location and technology company for the Dalian exchange is called DFIT, 
um, and they actually have their own technology company. Now, one of the factors of great importance in global financial markets is regulation, and it's always a hot topic. Who monitors and keeps check on all financial activity? Well, in China, the main regulatory body is, of course, the CSRC, but there is also the China Futures Association and the China Futures Market Monitoring Center. These exchanges also have their own uh, regulatory surveillance as is found uh, elsewhere in the world. All this is designed to promote market integrity and efficiency. Market manipulation of any kind is strictly prohibited. So let us now take a look at the international Chinese futures products that are currently available. The sour crude contract on the INE, product code SC, has a contract size of 1,000 barrels and is denominated in Chinese yuan. There are 12 monthlies followed by eight quarterlies. Delivery is physical. Here's a snapshot taken straight from the website. As you can see, as far as volume and open interest are concerned, they're all very healthy and it's very easy to execute calendar spreads down the curve. Also on the INE is the low sulfur fuel oil. Its product code is LU and has a contract size of 10 metric tons and is denominated in CNY. There are 12 monthlies and delivery is again physical. Again, this is a snapshot from the website. Uh, open interest and volume, all very healthy. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to trade calendar spreads once again. Lastly on the INE is the TSR20 rubber contract. Product code NR has a contract size of 10 tonnes and is denominated in CMY. There are 12 monthlies and delivery is physical. Doesn't trade quite as much as the other two products, but again, there is a, there is a curve there and volume and open interest are very tradable. So moving on to the ZCE, um, they have a PTA contract, um, which is terephthalic acid. Product code is TA, has a contract size of five tons and is denominated again in CMY. There are 12 monthlies and delivery is physical. Again, a snapshot straight from the ZCE website. Um, the PTA contract is highly liquid and can trade in excess of 1 million lots in the most active month. Incidentally, PTA, which is used to make a variety of plastic materials, is a derivative of crude oil and is therefore highly correlated to it. Last, but by no means least, is iron ore on the DCE. Product code I, the contract size is 100 tonnes and the denomination is in CMY. There are 12 monthlies and physical delivery also. Again, a snapshot from directly from the website, a highly liquid contract, plenty of calendar spread opportunity all down the curve. Now, in terms of trading hours of these products, and bearing in mind it's GMT plus eight hours, there are generally three distinct sessions. Crude oil does have a slightly longer third session than the other products. Now, all of these products can be traded outright or as an intra exchange calendar spread. However, they can be spread versus their international equivalents in an inter exchange spread. So for INE crude, this can be spread against NYMEX WTI and also ICE Brent crude. INE rubber can be spread against the rubber contract on TOCOM in Japan or likewise at SGX in Singapore. INE fuel oil can be uh, spread against gas oil on ICE Europe. And DCE iron ore can be spread versus uh, the contract on SGX or also on HKEX. Lastly, as I mentioned before, PTA, which is a downstream product of crude and is therefore highly correlated to it. 
Now today's webinar, as I mentioned at the beginning, is sponsored by the Dalian Exchange. And I would like to share some information with you about our gracious sponsors, the DCE. Founded in 1993, the DCE is one of the four Chinese exchanges with the approval of the State Council and the only futures exchange in Northeast China. After more than 20 years of development and growth, the DCE has become not only an important venue for price discovery and risk management in China, but also the world's largest venue for ag products, iron ore, plastics, and coal. In total, there are 66 futures products on China's exchanges, 20 of which are listed at the DCE, and one of which is available internationally, namely iron ore. China's exchanges have, of course, shown huge growth over the past decade, and the Shanghai Futures Exchange, the Dalian Commodity Exchange, and the Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange are all currently knocking on the door of being in the world's top 10, according, according to the FIA. Now, in terms of key market stats from 2019, Dalian Commodity Exchange volume and open interest accounted for over a third of all futures volume in China, DC iron ore being the third most heavily traded product in the entire country. However, combined with steel rebar, ferrous is the largest traded commodity in China currently. The DCE products have all seen excellent growth since 1993. The figures for 2019 are impressive with a total of over 1.3 billion contracts traded, nearly 70 trillion yuan in turnover with an ADV of nearly 6 million lots. It will be very interesting to see the figures for 2020 given China has perhaps weathered the COVID crisis better than most other countries. Now let's talk a little bit about China's booming economy. China's economy continues its recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to the latest official figures that were released today. The world's second biggest economy saw growth of 4.9% between July and September, compared to the same quarter last year. However, the figure is lower than 5.2% expected by economists. China is now leading the charge for a global recovery based on its latest GDP data. The near 5% growth is a far cry from the slump the Chinese economy suffered at the start of this year when the pandemic first emerged. For the first three months of this year, China's economy shrank by 6.8% when it saw nationwide shutdowns of factories and manufacturing plants. It was the first time China's economy had contracted since it started recording these figures back in 1992. Over the previous two decades, China has seen an average economic growth rate of about 9%, although the pace has gradually been slowing. While the COVID-19 pandemic has hampered this year's growth targets, China also remains in a trade war with the US, which has also hurt the economy. However, China's economy continues to grow at rates unimaginable in other COVID-hit countries. The draconian lockdown measures to control the virus, combined with some government stimulus, appear to have worked well. China's economy did get a boost this year from Golden Week, an annual holiday in October that sees millions of Chinese travel. With international travel severely restricted, uh, millions of Chinese have been traveling and spending domestically instead. There were 637 million trips in China over the eight day holiday period, which generated revenue of nearly 70 billion US dollars, according to data from the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Duty-free sales in the tropical highland province of Hainan more than doubled from last year, soaring by nearly 150% according to local customs data. So as you can see, China is booming still, despite COVID-19. Now, before I hand over to David, I have two remaining slides I grabbed from the Amazon car show, the Grand Tour, when Clarkson, Hammond and May previously of Top Gear firm fame, went to China. This particular slide slows passenger car production globally in millions for the year 2017. 
a process, as we all know, that requires the product we are focusing on today, iron ore. Japan tops that list at over 8 million cars produced. Not surprisingly, Germany's not far behind. Then we see the amount of passenger cars China produced in the same period. Nearly 25 million. That's three times that of Japan and five times that of Germany. China is booming in terms of, it, of its infrastructure and it shows no signs of slowing down. At the high point of Donald Trump's relationship with the President Xi Jinping, when they met in Beijing three years ago, the Chinese responded, the Chinese president responded to his US counterpart's pressure to liberalize financial services with a pledge. We will never close our doors, he said. They will only open wider and wider. Barely had Air Force One left the ground from Beijing. Sure enough, China's finance ministry announced sweeping reforms to remove ownership limits on foreign financial service companies operating the country, much to the delight of Wall Street. US-China relations today look very different. A battle is being fought on many fronts between the world's two top economies. Yet in the realm of finance, there is no evidence of relations breaking down. And so on that note, I would like to thank you all for listening. If there are any queries, please don't hesitate to contact me. I shall now hand over to David Hightower and we shall continue with the next portion of today's webinar. Over to you, David. <laughs>